hope you will come back. Next week, by the way, will be on Call It by Dr. Moss. It's going to be speaking, and it is really, really good. So I recommend that all y'all come back for her class. It'll be in here at 7 o'clock. If there's a whole bunch of people that show up, then they move downstairs to the conference room. But we'll start here, and I'll let security know. So you can always pick up the phone and dial zero, and they'll know where we're at in case you get lost. They can direct you. Those are usually two places that we feel that. 
Um, with false labor, there's no change in the cervix, no change in effacement, okay? Effacement is thinning of the cervix and widening of the cervix. The cervix just kind of, it's like, y'all, it is a miracle, absolutely, because the cervix gets, it goes from about this small to 10 centimeters, so the head, baby's head can get through. You know, it's a miracle. It really, really is. But with false labor, you're not going to have that. You're not going to have any dilation. Like I said, it'll go from small to big. And no evidence of bloody show. And we're going to talk about what bloody show is. But with false labor, you won't have that. Uh, the presenting part is not engaged in the pelvis in false labor. I'll take this doll right here. You know, babies swim around. Y'all felt one move. Have they gotten sideways yet? Kitchen ribs. Boy, that really feels good. Or they get down on your bladder, bounce up and down. You know, I just went to the bathroom and I have to go to the bathroom again. It's terrible. But with false labor, the baby will not be engaged. The whole idea, that baby knows what to do. Nature takes over. He's going to turn around to come out. Some of them come out sideways. Some of them come out uh, with their head tilted like this up. Uh, some of them will come out face first, but he's coming out, and he's coming out that direction, okay? With false labor, he's just sitting up in here saying, I ain't going nowhere. My turn this way, but he's not moving, okay? He's not getting into, into the pelvis area. And you will feel uh, when, you, when your baby begins to get in your pelvis because what will happen is you might get some unusual pains down there, and you'll actually feel like it's spreading. And I remember walking. We had, I had my first baby in Utah, and uh, they have, Mormons have a lot of babies. Wonderful place. They make you walk. So I walked and walked, and I remember getting to the point where I thought, I can't walk anymore. I felt like I was coming in for a landing. And what it was is that cartilage was getting loose. The hormones were getting loose. And so that's why they tell women don't met, that are pregnant not to play basketball or do any, you know, marathons or anything. I don't think I'm kidding. I've heard it all. But the cartilage, the hormones affects the cartilage in our bodies. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why with false labor, you don't see that. Okay? True labor. This is very important. Contractions occur regularly. They become stronger. They last longer. And they occur close together. Okay? Um, the contractions become more intense with walking. You know, a lot of times when you call your doctor, I think I'm in labor, he'll say, go walk. And you're thinking, what do you mean go walk? I'm gonna have this baby out here in a park and you want me to go walk? But there is really something to that. They know exactly what they're doing because if you start walking uh, with true labor, it doesn't go away, okay? Uh, contractions felt in the lower back and pain from contractions radiate to the lower portion of the abdomen. So that, it might start in the back, but it's coming down this way, okay? If you start feeling pain down here, I kind of want you to call your doctor, okay? Because that's real important. Cervical changes in, with true labor, you're going to have a bloody show. You're going to have softening. Um, the cervix just basically softens so it can move. You know, because our cervix doesn't normally feel soft. It feels kind of hard, kind of like cartilage. You're going to have effacement and you're going to have dilation. Okay? All of that is going to occur. Well, what's effacement? Effacement is, I'm going to show you a picture. I should move that slide up here. Um, it's where the baby is in stages. Like they start, they'll say, if they're zero effaced, they're, they're uh, equal with the ischial spines. Does that make sense? Probably not. Yeah, I, the picture's going to explain okay. it. You'll bear with me. Bloody show is a blood tension mucoid vaginal discharge that originates in the cervix and indicates pass passage of the mucus plug. Some women say that uh, it looks like a big booger. I've heard them say that before. Some women say it looks like the beginning of my period. You know how that looks. It's talking real plain. I apologize, but we have to let y'all know because the first thing she's going to do is ask you, what is this? <laughs> okay, so you're going to have to be very supportive. Um, stages of labor. There are four real stages, and then in the second stage, there's four stages, three stages, sorry, okay? And we're going to talk about each, each one of those stages. I'm going to run through that really fast because the tape goes into it in detail, okay? First stage of labor lasts from the onset of regular contractions to full dilation of the cervix. and doesn't have anything to do with the baby. We're talking about the first stage is full dilation of the cervix, okay? 
Uh, the time is anywhere from one hour to 20 hours. How many of y'all are first time mothers? Don't raise your hands, Amber. First time <laughs> if I know. All three of y'all are. You know, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but chances are your labor's going to be long. Okay? Um, but don't count on that because we do have exceptions. Okay? Uh, and it depends on whether you've had children before. The more children you have had, the faster your labor comes. I remember my grandmother and my mom, they're, they're a big family, like one and nine. Mm. And she used to talk about when they went to get the midwife, that, um, you know, that, that sometimes the midwife wouldn't make it because they mm -hmm. used to come in horse and buggy. And so my mom said, they like, oh, goodness, here comes another baby. Because my mom would have to help. She was the oldest. But uh, they're real close family. I'm not making fun of it, but it is true, the faster your labor, okay, the more children you have. So, be ready for a marathon. You got to get sleep, you got to get rest, you got to pack your bag, all those things. Sanford's got to pack his bag, Dad packs his bag. It's funny, y'all forget about y'all. I mean, y'all are having a baby too, okay? And believe me, if you breastfeed, you're going to be extremely worn out because babies that breastfeed eat every two hours. Anyway, now we're into the latent phase. Uh, we see more progress in effacement. The cervix becomes larger in order for the baby to be delivered appropriately and not much change in the baby's position down the canal. Okay, that's the latent phase. After the transition stage, you're going to see a lot of dilation of the cervix and increased rate of descent of the presenting part. You will begin to feel pressure of the head and the pelvis. You begin to feel some, you know, some stretching, some burning. Some women really never ever say that it's really painful, and then some women say that's the most painful experience I've ever had in my entire life. Hmm. It's your labor. You know, your pain tolerance may be very low, yours may be very high. We don't know. So, as nurses and doctors, we try to be prepared for anything. It's your labor. We're going to work with you. Okay. Um, second stage of labor is the time the cervix is fully dilated to the birth of the fetus. Okay? If they tell you you're fully dilated, you're fixing to have a baby. Usually, when they tell you that, you've dilated to 10 and your cervix looks something like that. So you can see the top of the baby's head and they call that crowning. Okay? You'll begin to see hair. It's wonderful. Because we know that if we get that far, you are almost there. Now, I'm, I wish I could tell you that you won't be tired or exhausted. You probably will be. But when we say crowning, give me all you got. Okay? We want to get that baby out of there. Okay? Um, in the second stage of labor, uh, women who've had babies before, it lasts about 20 minutes. And women who've never had children, it lasts about 50 minutes. So I would say you're going to have an hour, 20 minutes to an hour of real pain. Okay? You can do it. If you choose to get an epidural, you won't even feel that. You'll just feel the movement. Okay? Um, the second stage of labor, the first phase is complete dilation of the cervix. Second phase, contractions resume strong, bearing down efforts. Fetal station is advancing. And the third phase is crowning until birth. Okay? So you see it's just a progressive thing that we're getting here. Um, third stage of labor is birth of the fetus until the delivery of the placenta. Okay? I'll tell you what happened to me. I thought I had my baby. I was laying there holding him, just enjoying him, thinking this is just the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. All of a sudden, I felt this huge contraction, and I thought, it's another baby. I said, they've missed a twin. I mean, I really did. <laughs> and what it was, it was the placenta, okay? So be prepared for that. Now, is that one painful too? It is, but not, you're so happy, Sanford, that it's over with, that your baby is here and beautiful and healthy and you're holding it. I think women can stand any amount of pain. It is amazing to me when the baby comes out, you forget all about your pain. I mean, you really do. You, you just, and you know, right now, I can't even remember mine. Just very briefly can I remember it. I remember telling my husband, no, this is the last child you were ever had. You better enjoy it. <laughs> And a few other words. <laughs> you know, so dads kind of have a hard way to go. Um, so, when that placenta is delivered, you know, this is usually where dads just hit the floor. If they're
they're not prepared for it, okay? Think of this, picture in your mind, it's got this cord attached to it, okay, which you cut, because you're the dad, so you cut the cord, and then mom has this huge expulsion of stuff, it comes out, and the first thing the doctor does is pick it up and start looking at it. Now, what would he be looking for? Retained placental parts. That will get you in trouble, okay? Because what that does, if you retain any placental parts, it could cause you to bleed. So the doctor makes very sure that that placenta is completely intact, okay? One side's smooth, the other side looks like liver. So if dad's not completely exhausted enough from just the labor process itself, that's maybe when he hits the floor, okay? Because you're sitting there thinking, I've made it through the baby. My baby is beautiful. And you get this huge relief over you. And then you see the placenta, and it's like, oh, that's when I have seen dads get sick. So be prepared for that. <laughs> Third stage of labor may last up to three to five minutes, may last up to 30 minutes. It separates uh, with the third or fourth contraction. So I told you one big contraction. It really is a little bit more contractions than that. You'll feel the build up, okay? And then you'll, you'll see that it goes out. Um, the fourth stage of labor is the first two hours after birth. Now, I can't say enough about this time right here because being pregnant is hard. Our body goes through a lot of changes. You know, we go through changes physically, mentally, hormonally. And so your body's gonna adjust back right quick. You may be laughing, you may be crying, okay? You may be exhausted, you may be cussing your husband, you may be saying, come here and hug me. We don't know how you're gonna act. Your blood pressure may be sky high, it may be low. What we hope is everything goes smooth, but expect a blood pressure cuff on your arm, expect an IV, okay? Um, the blood pressure cuff's gonna be going up every 15 minutes. That kind of hurts a little bit, so be ready for that. As soon as we get through the two hours, it usually comes off to where they do it every hour, every two hours. Okay, we'll be checking your temp, we'll be checking all those things. Pain management for labor. This is really important. And Sanford, I, I hope you're home because I want you to hear this. This is where you take over, where dads take over, okay? There are pressure points uh, in your body. I'm not going to go over those. You can look those up online. The reason why is I don't even want you experimenting with them until you come to the hospital and look them up, okay? Because they can induce labor. There's partner massage. Uh, partner massage is wonderful. Some women like the top of their head rubbed right here. Some women like their shoulder rubbed. Somebody want, some people like hand massages. Just massage my hands, you know. It's just whatever she wants is what she gets. Sounds funny, but that's what you need to do. Work with her, okay? Because y'all are so important to the labor process. I'm talking about dads right now. And moms communicate that with them, with you, you know, to them. If you're hot, tell them, I'm hot, I'm burning up, get a fan. If you're cold, get me some blankets, you know. That's where dad's gonna come in handy. And what we find with massage a lot of times is called the gate control theory. If I had this baby right here, and say I was gently turning this baby over on his back, if I was pinching the baby and rubbing the baby's foot at the same time, the baby's less likely to feel the pinch. Now, I don't, don't go home and pinch your baby, but it was an example, okay? If, if I'm pinching you with this hand and I'm rubbing you gently with this one, chances are you're gonna feel the rubbing the gently and you won't feel the pain. They call that the gate control theory. So if we can get mom, I mean dad's rubbing mom somewhere, rubbing her feet, rubbing her hands, uh, rubbing her hair. If we can get dad to do that, chances are she's not gonna feel the pain as bad, okay? That's the gate control theory. Progressive muscle relaxation. You can practice this. This is good for everybody if you've had a really stressful day at Walmart, okay? You wanted to just get after a customer, but you never can, because what? Because just customers all the way right. You know what I'm saying? What you can do, Take your hands and start at your fingertips and contract your fingertips, contract your hands, contract your wrists, contract your arms. You get the idea? So I'm working all the way up my body. You know, if you can contract your brow. And then what I do, I relax my fingertips, I relax my hands, I relax my wrists, I relax my shoulders, and I work all the way through my body. And I'm going to sleep. <laughs> so I'm closing your eyes. What you want to do is practice that, though. 
Don't wait till you get in the hospital to practice that. Okay, and you can practice that together. You can say, squeeze your hand, squeeze your wrist. Do something similar to that in yoga class. I've never yoga taken classes. yoga, but they're all they're all telling me they want me to try to learn yoga so we can incorporate it into a prenatal class because they say it's wonderful. Yeah. Does, does it work? It really does. Really, yeah. I've heard it reduces stress like crazy. So that so that's the progressive muscle relaxation. Pressure points. We talked about those. I'm not going to say this word. Say that word, Sam. Nope. Applause, I believe is how you say it. It's like stroking, stroking usually of the abdomen in rhythm with breathing during contraction. So I'm going to show you. It's kind of like. If I do. And mom, you can do that for yourself. Dad, you can do it too, mom. You can be behind her and do that. You can be beside her and do that. Camera pressure is steady pressure applied by a support person to the sacral area with the fist or heel of the hand. You will see this in the video, but you actually, your partner would take right here and just put a little pressure. You know, I've seen the whole palms of the hand, they just put a little pressure. It's kind of like, if you if you have that there, you don't feel the pain quite as bad. Mm. It helps, it helps. Is, this is after, after the birth. You're no, saying before. Before, okay. Oh, okay, during labor, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And it helps, it helps a lot, a lot. Um, effacement, we talked about that. Thinning and shortening or obliteration of the cervix that occurs during late pregnancy or labor or both. There we go. Now we answered your question. Uh, engagement. You're going to hear the, the nurse say she's 20% effaced. She's 100% effaced. If they say you're 100% effaced, you're fixing to have a baby, okay? Um, engagement is another number that nurses keep up with. This was what I was talking about here. See these areas here? Those little spine areas? That's zero. Anything above that, negative one, negative two, negative three, baby's getting into the canal. So baby's starting to be more here, okay? Um, so when baby passes the spines, it's plus one, plus three, plus four. You get the idea. So if you start hearing 100% of face plus four, 10 dilated, chances are we'll fix and have a baby. The nurse will come in and check you, and the doctor will come in and check you. Okay? Our doctors are very wonderful here. They tend to spend the night up here when you're in labor. They're very close. Okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Um, but you'll hear these numbers throughout the, the experience. Pain. The, the woman and her partner should be encouraged to experiment with different types of massage during pregnancy to determine what might feel and be most relaxing during labor. Okay? I would highly encourage y'all to do that. Because dad is like, he is your, um, he's your advocate. Your nurse is your advocate too, but she's worried about your blood pressure. She's worried about your heart rate. She's worried about, are you breathing good? What's that baby's heart right now? Um, Dad is worried about the temperature in the room. Has she had some ice chips? Does she need a wet cloth? You kind of get the idea. It's not that the nurse doesn't worry about that, but that's Dad's total focus is to make you happy during that time, okay? Uh, pain perception, um, this was interesting. Women who perceive touch during labor as positive have less pain, anxiety, and need for pain medication. Believe it or not, my first baby I delivered totally natural. Can y'all believe that? It was a long 24 hours. We went to uh, Lamont's. We did Lamont's. And I guess we excelled that. And I don't know, but I really think that did help. Um, the progressive muscle relaxation, do practice that at home, alternately tensing and relaxing the muscles of your arms, chest and neck, shoulders, back and legs in a sequential order. Start with your toes, go to your ankles, go to your calves, go to your leg. Think about that. It can really make a big difference. Um, women who have continuous support beginning early in labor are less likely to use pain medication or epidurals and are more likely to have spontaneous vaginal birth and less likely to report dissatisfaction with their birth experience. Okay. And you can see that this is kind of how it looks. Mom looks mad, dad looks desperate. Desperate to please. Okay. Um, and don't pay atten any attention to what mom says to you during that labor. Okay, outside of, uh, pay attention to the good things. If she says something bad, just let it go. Let it roll 
off, okay? We gotta be tough, just let it roll off. Because her, her hormones are changing. You know, from the minute you go in labor, sometimes you're happy, other times you wanna cry, next time you wanna scream. I mean, it's really, it's really serious. Um, so the coach partner role uses distraction. He's your advocate, and he's going to encourage you. You can do this. I want you to hear her say, because she's going to say, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. You might get to that point. Okay? Dad's there saying, you can do this. I'm here to help you. Remind her that women do it every day. Okay? Because you will think, I can't do this. I need that little bit of extra strength that you have that you need to... Uh, remember that when we say crowning, give me that strength, okay? Let's get that push. You can do it. Um, strategies to decrease pain, we talked about all of these. Uh, therapeutic touch, just somebody holding your hand, okay? Walking, you'll see people walk to relieve pain. Have you ever pulled a muscle where you wanted to walk? I have, where if I could just think if I could just get up and walk. Rocking, a lot of people will rock back and forth. Okay? I'm talking about while you're in labor. Okay? Um, light dancing, you see people do that. Application of cold or heat. Now, I know you, you, you would have to ask for a heating pad, and I'm not sure they would get it to you. But if you labor at home, you can certainly use your heating pad at home. If you brought a heating pad, would they let you I don't you know, Sandra. We'd have to check it in. We'd have to check in with my head nurse on that. I'm not sure. Um, a TENS unit, some hospitals have that available. I'm waiting on somebody to ask for it. Do y'all know what that is? Mm -hmm. you, do have one. you do have one? Mm -hmm. It's like for back pain. Mm -hmm. If you have that and you can bring it to the hospital, I'm sure that they might not mind if you used it. Ask your doctor that, mm -hmm. okay? A water therapy, nothing like a bath. I'm telling you, our shower is wonderful. Just make sure though, if you do the water therapy, that um, that your doctor, that your mucus flow is not broken, okay? So we're talking very early labor here. In Europe, they are delivering in bathtubs. Have y'all seen that on the YouTube? Um, that's all I'll say about that. It's in Europe mostly. Um, change positions, okay? I'm telling you, do some, um, uh, get down on your knees and your hands and kind of stand, you know, sit like that. Um, you can, I don't know, kind of do this sometimes. It kind of helps open up the pelvis. Just make sure you're up here when you do. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, you know, stretch just a little bit like this. Do some positions that's going to help the baby move. And think about it. That baby's in you, and he needs to turn around and go this way. Okay? Whether he presents like this, or he presents like this, or he comes out sideline, most babies are going to want to come out head first. So think about you in a pool of water. <clears throat> He's in swimming around in water. He's going to want to turn and come out. So help him. Give him a different position to kind of get in. Okay? Let's see. We talked about that. Um, there's breathing techniques. There's aromatherapy, which is like, you might like cinnamon. If you love cinnamon, bring something that smells like cinnamon. Okay? I will say that the labor room has some unusual smells, okay? And I kind of want you to be prepared for that. Well, they thought you bring like your own sheets and pillows, so like that. I'll find out from our head nurse and ask you. Okay. Yeah, I'll ask about that. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of weird like that too. I'm, when I go to the hotel, I, like, I, don't, I don't like that stuff. Mm -hmm. I like my own stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but they do wash the linen. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's probably hotter than it would ever be in our house. At least like my own pillow. If I just have my own pillow, I think I might be a little happier. Yeah, I'll ask and we'll get the answer. Okay. okay. Um, music. Uh, I don't know what y'all like. I'm one of the people I like anything from, uh, I don't know, Guns N' Roses to Bach. I'm kind of weird. I like all kinds of music. I like, you know, I even like, uh, what's the name of the music? Well, there we go. I like that too if it's in the right place. So I like all kinds of music. Bluegrass, I like that. So, you know, I'm a weird one, but what works for you, your favorite music, get you some headphones. You might choose to tune out everybody for an hour or two. You know, music will get you some rest sometimes. That's what you need. When you can rest, speaking of rest, rest in between contractions, okay? 
if you go to sleep, I'm good with that. If you can do it. Okay. Imagery, really important. Think of your most favorite place in the whole wide world. Mine is my farm. Okay, I can close my eyes right now and I can picture the way it looks. Find a place for you, picture that place, and go there. It really, really helps. If it's the ocean, you know, you can sit there and imagine the waves coming in and coming out. I mean, people can almost hypnotize themselves if they want to, okay? Use the focal points. Now, this is a little bit of a weird one. This one is, was hard for me to do when I was in labor. But what I would do is, like, if I was standing right here, you see that casing for the white bulb over there? Let's use that one. I would stare at that thing, and I would say to myself, that is there, it's round, it's got gray in it, it has a light bulb, and I am focusing so hard on it. And in my mind, I'm describing everything I can about that. And, and you'd be surprised how it gets your mind off your pain, okay? So that's something you can do. Breathing technique. Everybody take a cleansing breath. They'll tell you every once in a while, take a cleansing breath, okay? That's when you don't know what to do. It's like, okay, I'm so confused. You want me to do this, you want me to do that? Think in your mind, okay, I'm just gonna take a cleansing breath. And I'm gonna start up. Now I'm listening to what she's telling me to do. Slow pace breathing, we're gonna talk about that. There's a modified pace deep breathing, a pattern pace for panic low breathing. I don't believe they're on the next slide. Or that one may be on down. But anyway, cleansing breath, relax breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. So and you want to use that at the beginning and end of each contraction, okay? So you're kind of catching air there. Slow paced breathing. It's six to eight breaths per minute. It's performed at approximately one half the normal breathing rate. So you're slowing your breathing rate down. And you go in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Now, Dad, this is Sanford. This is where y'all come in play, okay? Because you remember, take it in, and two, three, four, out, two, three, four. It's hard for me to do it and count, but you get the idea, okay? And uh, and that just kind of slows everything down. Because I'm gonna tell you, I don't know about y'all, have you ever stopped your toe and it really, really hurts? The first thing I do is start breathing fast. Like, that's gonna make a difference. I start going, <laughs> Well, I'm gonna tell you, it starts hurting down there, and that's what women want to do. We want to start breathing fast. <laughs> when we do that, the baby doesn't get good oxygen, okay? And we need, the only thing we care about right now, not the only thing, we care about you, but we care about that healthy baby. We want that perfect, healthy baby. So we need to slow that breathing down, okay? It's just like when I stomp my toe, I go, <laughs> I mean, when I really hurt, if you really hurt yourself, elbow's a good one too. You'll, you'll breathe fast with that. So we want to slow this breathing down. So that's when dad says, okay, take a deep breath in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. That's what you'll do better, okay? Then there's the modified pace breathing. Uh, it's more. It's not more than twice the normal breathing rate. And you just go in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's just like, And what that does for you, that conserves energy, lessens fatigue, and it reduces the risk for hyperventilation. Because hyperventilation is what we're fighting here. Everybody wants to do it, okay? Pattern pace or pant blood breathing, it enhances concentration. It's a three to one breathing. Um, and so um, on it, you go in, out, in, out, and then in, blow and you try to blow through that contraction, okay? Because the contraction is gonna be like my hand, it's gonna go, and then it's gonna relax. Okay, so you try to blow through it. You can also do a four to one, where you go, so you're actually blowing through that contraction, okay? Takes a little bit of practice. And we talked about music, can't say enough about it. Positioning, look how she's doing. 
Can you imagine how that's helping the Vedic turn? Giving them a different position. It's also, it's also widening her pelvis here. Right? Very, very important. I have, I have actually seen women on tape deliver this way too. You seen it? No, I was wondering about that. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to research some of this as well. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, this one, I would not recommend doing this one until you get to the hospital. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Because you're talking about opening up a pelvis, that's going to help. Okay? Plus, you might not be able to get back up if you want. <laughs> I was doing. Um, this is a great one. So you've got two people working on you there. You got your leg up high, and notice how she's doing that counter pressure in the back. I want to tell you how awesome that is. Okay, one person's got your knee. I don't know if y'all like your mom or, or to be in there or not. Like my mom made me nervous. So I was like, I wanted my husband. So it was well, actually, she wasn't even there. It was just me and my husband. This is a great position. So you're distracting her, she's leaning on you, okay? You can rock back and forth like that. Okay. Um, this is something similar to the bed that we have. So the bed that you get put on, chances are, we have four that are not, and the rest of them are. Remind me to take on a tour before we leave today. I'm gonna show you the area. But our beds break down. They'll just start coming apart. And so you won't ever have to get off of one bed into another one. Um, this is a good position. Okay. Always have somebody with you, though, because I can envision myself getting down on the floor and not being able to get up. I mean, seriously, when you get ready to write deliver, it's a lot of weight. Okay. Um, that's an excellent position. All these positions have one common goal to help help um, expand the pelvis. Okay. Hydrotherapy, we talked about that. Um, nothing wrong with that, but what did I say about hydrotherapy? Make sure what? Water's not broken. Water's not broken. And really, I'd like to see your mucus plug there, too. Okay. Whoops. Things to expect during labor, the IV catheter. Everybody's going to get one of these. Okay. Have y'all been, have everybody had an IV before? You know how the nurse says, hold on just a second, a little bitty pinch, it hurts. It hurts for just a second, though. Okay. Um, and this way, we have emergency access to you. We have medication. We have fluid. Did I spell access right? A-C-C-E-S-S? -S? Sure. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay. And then we have a certain way that we monitor the baby. It's called an external fetal heart monitor. Okay, very important. It looks like that. Sorry about the blurry picture. It sounds like little, 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 little. When you have a contraction, it'll go little, 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 because the baby's heart rate is going up because he's saying, Mama, squeeze a minute. Okay? So as it, with every contraction, you kind of squeeze the baby. And he's like, what is she doing? That's what we want, though. That's normal. If you have a contraction and we hear the heart rate go down, that's when we get concerned. So that's why we monitor, okay? This is just one way that we monitor. Big old straps go across. They'll continually be coming in, reading position, and trying to find the right place to hear the baby's heart rate, okay? Um, and then we have an internal fetal heart monitor. We have two different types, okay? We have the IUPC and the FSC. That the fetal scalp electrode, actually get screwed into the baby's head. Sounds terrible, sounds awful, but it is so small, it's like that right there. It's too tiny, okay? But I will tell you when your baby's born, if you have one of these, chances are he'll have a little bitty red thing that looks like a little pimple there, okay? It is very accurate. It's more accurate than what's on, on your abdomen, okay? In a uterine pressure device, what they do with this, and only the doctor can put this in, is it's kind of a really flexible catheter and it just slips beside the baby. Okay? And that way we can tell the pressure that when you have a contraction, which are how much pressure is in your uterus. Okay? Well, 
But they only use those if something like if they're starting to have complications or something. Usually like after your water's broken. They'll do that and if yeah. everything's going okay. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the one they, they put on the baby's head. Mm -hmm. And it's so, I mean. Every time they do that? Pretty much, yeah. Unless you're one of the lucky ones that delivers really fast when you get here. Like if you've had six or seven kids, we don't have time to get those out. Mama's already delivered the baby. Um, assisted delivery, there's an episiotomy, there's a forceps delivery, and there's a packing delivery. Um, I don't know, a episiotomy is just where you dilate it to 10, and maybe your baby has a little bit too large of a head. Hey. How you doing? How you doing? Come on. Come in here, <laughs> This must be the time every day that the batteries wear out. Yeah. Daniel, he starts Yeah, let's go with it. Did you guys go over there? Yeah. Oh my God. He's a good guy. So basically the baby's head's gonna expand, okay? And so what, what happens is we need just a little extra, okay? So the doctor will make a tiny, tiny little slit and that'll be just enough for the head to go through. And once the head can get through, everything else usually follows really easy. Forceps delivery, um, the doctor will slip an instrument in you around the baby and just kind of give him a little nudge. And that baby will poop, okay? Vacuum delivery. It is actually a little handheld vacuum. They squeeze it, it gets on the baby's head, it gives a little sucking pressure. She back, the uh, lady delivery doctor kind of bears down, kind of pulls just a little bit, and the baby goes Poof. The thing about vacuum deliveries is they're wonderful, but I have to tell you the story. I had um, Chad, was one of my partners over there at Magnolia Learning Institute, and it was so funny because they gave us a bunch of stuff from Lady Delivery that was expired. So Chad takes it and puts it on his head right here. And he pumps it up. And for three weeks, I looked at that spot on his head. <laughs> and every time I looked at him, I could not quit laughing. Because literally, you can suction, put that suction on the table, and it will pick up the end of the table with so much suction. And Chad didn't know that. So he wore like a surgical cap for like three weeks. So it was pretty funny. So vacuum delivery is... It's good in my heart. But if your baby gets a vacuum delivery, <clears throat> it may be that the baby's head is kind of, you know, kind of red here. But isn't that so much better than a C-section? And so what you gotta think is it may take a week for that to go away. It's just a little suction, just a little suction, okay? Also, remember that the baby's head has to go through your canal and there's Places in the in the skull where it's not fused. They call it used to call it a soft spot. <coughs> Remember that your baby may come out and one side of the head may be a little larger than the other. Or this got a big old bruise on this side and this side doesn't. So everybody's beautiful. I have not seen one baby up here that's not beautiful, but there are some that look like they've been beat up a little bit. Okay? And it's just because they had some bruising going through the canal. Okay. Now I want you to picture this though. Think about when your baby's going through your canal and something grabs him right here and kind of squeezes on its way out. Do you know what that does? All of those other secretions in his lungs, that fluid that he's been breathing, that gets squeezed out all at the same time. And so sometimes babies that deliver vaginally have it a lot easier breathing than babies that have C-sections, okay? Which is one reason why. I don't want you to get a C-section unless you absolutely have to. <clears throat> Epidural. Now, I've been sitting up here talking about natural labor and how wonderful it is, and it is wonderful, but it's not for everybody. We're gonna stick with your plan. If you already know you want an epidural, make that known. Make that known to your doctor, okay? And that is the end of this. Any questions? Let's watch that tape because it really is good. Does anybody need a break or anything? Go to the or anything? I have to call on Sam for here to work my video. Let's see. It usually works for me.
Parker, you had some serious gadgets. <laughs> I don't like those though. will give you your baby's uh, footprint too um, and for the first hour I would if, if it were me I would try to have that just for my baby and me and, and dad and whoever else you want in there why do we not have sound hmm. I take my speakers Warm-up contractions can be uncomfortable 
but aren't usually as intense as true labor contractions. Also, unlike the contractions you'll have during labor, warm-up contractions have no regular pattern, last less than 30 seconds each, and will eventually fade away. I have had um, Braxton Hicks contractions for the past week, I think, but they have not been strong or anything. I do feel kind of like pain in my back. If you have regular Braxton Hicks contractions the before 37 weeks have, of pregnancy, I'm sure it's, a true it's important to be sure you're not going well into labor. Yeah, they're a little heavier, this maybe. is called preterm labor and could result in a premature baby. So call your healthcare provider if any time before your 37th week you have contractions every 15 minutes or less, or more than four in one hour. You should also call if you notice leaking of fluid or a change or increase in vaginal discharge before 37 weeks. If you are having preterm contractions, your healthcare provider might ask you to empty your bladder lie down to rest, and drink fluids, which usually causes the contractions to slow down or stop. Time your contractions as you rest, and keep in touch with your healthcare provider to let him or her know if they are continuing or becoming stronger. If they don't stop, medication may be given to try and prevent preterm labor, and give your baby more time to stay inside of you and develop. Another sign that labor is near is when your baby drops deeper into your pelvis. This is called lightning or engagement. And for first time moms, it usually happens about two weeks before labor. Some moms might not even notice it happening. It's called lightning because you will probably be able to breathe more easily since your baby is no longer pressing against your lungs. There is also less pressure on your stomach, so you might be able to eat larger meals and get some relief from heartburn. However, you will probably feel more pressure on your bladder after the baby drops, which means more frequent trips to the bathroom. I tried to not drink before I went to bed because I would always have to constantly pee and get up in the middle of the night to the bathroom. So, but then I felt all dehydrated. I don't know, I couldn't find happy medium. Another sign that labor may be near is the release of the mucus plug. As you get closer to labor, your cervix begins to thin out and open. This releases the mucus that has kept the uterus sealed during pregnancy. Some women notice spotting of blood or mucus when the plug is released. This usually occurs a few days or weeks before labor, or for some moms, right at the start. Other pre-labor signs include a weight loss of one to three pounds, a backache causing restlessness, diarrhea, and the nesting instinct, which is nature's way of getting you to prepare your home for your newborn. You start cleaning up, watch out. Like deep cleaning. <laughs> watch out. usually begins between the 37th and 42nd weeks of pregnancy. It's unclear what causes labor to start, but it probably involves a change in hormones triggered by the baby once she's ready to breathe on her own. Most commonly, labor starts with contractions as the powerful uterus tightens. Unlike warm-up contractions, true labor contractions don't fade away no matter what you do. Time some of these contractions and look for a pattern. You should see that they become stronger, last yeah, longer, she's got that extra and happen more frequently. Those are wonderful. Contact your healthcare like provider if you start having regular contractions. It's almost around 30 seconds. Maybe like 25. So when I actually went into real labor, I could not fall asleep at all, so around um, 2 in the morning, I was getting really, really bad contractions. For about 10% of moms, labor starts when the bag of waters, or amniotic sac, breaks. When this happens, you might notice a trickle of fluid, or it could be a more obvious gush. 
Usually, only the fluid around the baby's head and shoulders comes out. The rest will continue to cushion your baby, and some may leak out gradually during labor. But for most moms, their water breaks later on during labor. But I remember I had just gotten out of the shower, and it felt like a pop, and then something came running down my leg. If your water breaks, contact your health care provider. Use the acronym COAT to remember what you'll need to report about the fluid. COAT stands for color. Was it clear or brownish? Odor. Was it odorless or did it have a strong smell? Amount. Was it a slow leak or a gush of fluid? End time. When did you notice it? Usually the breaking of the water signals contractions to start either soon after the bag ruptures or within a number of hours. Your labor will progress through four different stages. During the first stage of labor, contractions cause the cervix to thin out and open. Once your cervix is open completely, the second stage of labor begins and it includes pushing and the birth of your baby. In the third stage of labor, you push out the placenta. Finally, in the fourth stage of labor, you and your baby recover from childbirth as you hold and breastfeed her. The total length of labor can vary widely from as little as six hours to 24 hours or more. Labor is usually longer if you're having your first child and shorter if you've already had a baby. While average lengths for the different stages are provided in this program, keep in mind that the length of your labor may be quite different. Now let's look at the first stage of labor, which is when contractions cause the cervix to open completely. The first stage has three parts, early labor, active labor, and transition. The first stage lasts an average of 14 hours for first-time moms. Let's take a closer look at early labor. <coughs> During early labor, the uterus contracts. The main job of early labor contractions is to cause the cervix to efface almost completely, which means it thins out or becomes shorter. The contractions also cause the cervix to dilate, meaning to open. In early labor, the cervix dilates to six centimeters. And remember that some of this effacement and dilation occurs during the last weeks of pregnancy, before labor begins. It's kind of unusual for someone like to go to their appointment and be three centimeters dilated. This contraction and graph know they shows how dilated. strong, how long, and how far apart contractions are. Early labor contractions are usually less intense and shorter than later contractions, lasting only 30 to 45 seconds. The time between contractions is measured from the beginning of one contraction to the beginning of the next. In early labor, contractions are spaced anywhere from five to 30 minutes apart giving moms a good opportunity to rest in between them. Early labor can take many hours, typically lasting six to 12 hours for first time moms. However, some women experience early labor contractions for a day or more. Since early labor can take a while, you'll probably feel most comfortable if you stay at home. It's important to nourish your body with food and fluids and rest as much as possible. Yeah, because when you get to the hospital, they're not going to let if you If you find it hard or uncomfortable to rest, so. experiment with different positions or do some light activity at or near home. Different things that I would do to manage the pain during early labor, I would walk around a little bit. I'd kind of like rock back and forth. You like the cat stretch and the kind of letting your belly hang. During labor, it's not just your body that will go through changes. Your emotions will change throughout the process too. During early labor, it's common to feel excited knowing your baby is finally on the way. You might also feel a bit anxious 
wondering about what lies ahead. Emotionally in early labor, I was calm. I was calm and content. <laughs> Partners and support people play an important role in helping moms stay comfortable during the different stages of labor. In early labor, support people can help mom rest and relax, take a walk, and help her pass the time by reading with her, playing card games, or doing other easy activities. During early labor, when the contractions um, started kicking in, I was in my hospital room with my family and um, they were doing an awesome job supporting me. After early labor, you move into active labor, which is part two of the first stage. A change in the power and frequency of contractions signals to you and your support people that you're in active labor. During active labor, the uterus contracts more frequently and with more intensity. This causes the cervix to thin out almost completely and dilate, which may cause some spotting of blood. The cervix dilates from about six to eight centimeters in active labor. <clears throat> Once you reach six centimeters, labor usually progresses more quickly. usually advised to come to the hospital or birthing center around the start of active labor when their contractions are four or five minutes apart and last a minute each. But always call your healthcare provider and follow their instructions on when to go to the hospital. I decided to go to the hospital because my contractions were stronger. I was not being able to like uh, breathe them out anymore. I was just really tired and I felt like this baby was really coming. When you arrive at the hospital or birthing center, your nurse or healthcare provider may check how far you've dilated by doing a pelvic exam. You're doing great. Four, seven years, yeah. Contractions during active labor are stronger, last longer, generally about 45 to 60 seconds each, and are closer together about three to five minutes apart. Active labor lasts an average of three to five hours. Yeah, the contractions were definitely progressing in intensity, kind of, kind of slowly, I would say. It was like a nice gradual escalation in intensity. Along with the increased intensity of active labor, this time can be more emotionally challenging as well. You will probably be more focused on your contractions and dependent on others, which can cause you to feel That's less confident. That's a confident. as well, right there. I could tell that she needed more support when she um, started to get more emotional. Um, I think that before it was just sort of being lighthearted and keeping her spirits up, but after she got really, I could tell she was in more pain and that it was more intense that she needed uh, more support and also more physical support as far as comfort measures went. Support people can help mom by providing words of encouragement, assisting her in changing positions, and using the relaxation and pain management techniques that work best for her. Also, make sure the labor room is quiet and comfortable, and help her rest <clears throat> as much as possible in between contractions. As active labor progresses, the baby starts a process called internal rotation, which helps her head get into position for birth. The baby's head turns so that the back of it is toward the front of the mother. This is called the anterior position and allows her to more easily fit through the pelvis and into the birth canal. In some births, the baby's head turns so that the back of it is against her mother's back. This is the posterior position. In this position, her head puts added pressure on her mother's back, which may cause back pain for the mother and slower progress. If your baby turns to the posterior position, 
You could try certain labor positions that use gravity and open your pelvis to help your baby turn to the anterior position. Those positions are so important now. Don't just stay in one spot in labor. The third and final part of the first stage of labor is called transition, which is usually the most intense part of labor, but also the shortest. You probably throw up during that time. The contractions it seemed like they were so close together, just like coming on top of each other over and over. It's like, oh, I have to be in transition. I was, I was excited. During transition, the forceful contractions cause the top of the uterus to grow thick and strong enough to push the baby down. Contractions also cause the cervix to dilate completely from eight to 10 centimeters. Due to the intensity of transition, it's common to experience hot flashes, parking chills, shaking, nausea, or vomiting. She was starting to feel nauseous, I think. Um, Stacy um, Stacey and I were pretty much next to her bed the entire time until she was ready to push, um, just supporting her through the feelings of sickness. Contractions during transition intensify quickly and might have two or more peaks. They last 60 to 90 seconds each and are one to three minutes apart, allowing you very little time to rest in between. Transition usually lasts anywhere from 30 minutes up to two hours. Because of the physical challenges of transition and the length of time you have now been in labor, it's likely you will feel a mix of intense emotions, ranging from being confused, to irritated, to even angry. It's helpful to stay determined, knowing you are getting close to the pushing phase. Support people can assist mom in focusing during contractions by using direct eye contact and short to the point directions. They can also encourage her to rest in between contractions and give her extra emotional support to keep her from getting discouraged during this intense period. It may help to remind her that each contraction brings her closer to the birth of her baby. The cold ride was great. I remember that too. Because you're so hot and sweaty, the cold wrap was actually what I was focusing on, was the coldness when it hit my body. So when he would put that on, that's it's taking my mind off the pain a little bit. After transition, labor progresses to the second stage where you will push and give birth. Once your cervix is fully dilated, you might feel an urge to push right away, or your contractions might seem to slow down or stop for 20 minutes or more before you feel the urge to push. The you can use this time to get some much needed rest. Good. I feel like she's in a good position. Second stage contractions are less intense than transition contractions, but still powerful enough to push your baby down. They last 60 to 90 seconds each and are three to five minutes apart. The second stage can be as short as 20 minutes or last as long as three hours or more. As second stage contractions build, most women feel a strong urge to bear down and push. I do remember like feel, feeling like the need to push and like the need to just be done with it. Um, and my body was like telling me to, so it was very noticeable. <laughs> the mix of emotions you experience entering the pushing stage can be overwhelming. You might feel relief and energy from a second wind. Or if pushing takes longer than expected, this excitement may be mixed with exhaustion and frustration. During second stage, partners can help mom change into comfortable, helpful positions. Second stage is also an important time for support people to provide focus and emotional support. Tell her you're doing great, you're almost there, or just a few more pushes, and remind her to rest between pushes. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was really excited. It was the big moment. <laughs> so I was very excited too. Like all the waiting had paid off and all the pain had paid off. By this point in labor, the top of the uterus is very thick and pushes on the baby with each contraction, helping the baby to move through the pelvis. This movement is called descent. The nurse brought in the bar to, to use for pushing. Um, and actually, I think the bar was really helpful. I liked that position a lot, especially because um, the midwives through all of our education and stuff talked about how important it was to make sure that I wasn't laying down so that my pelvic area was open and wasn't squished because when you lay down, it kind of makes your pelvic opening smaller. Your healthcare provider might talk about your baby's pelvic station, which is the position of the baby's head in relation to the spines of the pelvis. The baby's spines position of the is pelvis. measured in plus or are. minus centimeters from these spines. During most of the pregnancy, she is in the negative range. After lightning, she is usually even with the spines at the zero station, and gradually during labor, she drops into the positive range. During second stage, the baby progresses to the plus five station for birth. As you push with each contraction, your baby's head moves down and then slips back slightly in between contractions. To help her head descend more easily, her skull is made up of separate bony plates that slide together to help her head fit through the birth canal. This is what gives many newborns a cone-shaped head for a few days or so after birth. And if that bothers you, you just put a little the pad on. The head crowns Get a cute little when it pad, stretches the on. vaginal opening be gone. between the folds. Yeah, this squeezes the head so it does not slip back anymore in between contractions. During crowning, mothers often feel a burning sensation in the perineum, the skin between the vaginal opening and the anus. After crowning comes the birth of the head. The baby extends her head and lifts her chin, allowing the top of her head to move out of the birth canal. Her head starts coming out face down and then turns to line up with her shoulders, which are still inside of her mother. With the next push, one shoulder comes out and then the other. After her shoulders are out, the rest of her body slips out and she is born. And that cord looks so much just like that. That's the part that y'all will cut, the dads will cut if you want to. The doctor will hand you the scissors and you'll cut or he tells you to. Yeah. And they usually give you those scissors to keep it too. It's kind of neat. Some people bronze them. <laughs> Blood as I envisioned before I had the same well, body babies with it and pushed them out. It was like a, just a huge relief. Like, oh my God. She's did. doing skin to skin, fine. which is what I hope y'all will do within the first hour. Or so important. It's just so neat. I was just like, oh my God, so this is over. But this little thing that was in here and my tummy is now out and oh god it was just such a great experience. <laughs> I remember like a shock. Now yeah, in this situation I wish they had moved her gown. Okay, because it needs to be skin to skin if we did it right. After your baby's birth, you start the third stage of labor. If there are no complications, ask your doctor or midwife to lay your baby against your bare skin as soon as she is born. Holding her skin to skin right after birth helps her temperature, breathing, and blood sugar levels to adjust. You may notice that she calms down when she feels your warm skin. It's the closest thing to what she felt inside the womb. Skin to skin contact will also help both of you start breastfeeding. In fact, feeding her within the first hour of life has shown to have a positive effect on long-term breastfeeding and milk production. 
King of Skin was great. I feel like it was it was the right thing to do. You know, they, they needed that bond, that instantaneous bond. I wasn't expecting the In fact, these will be brought out. They'll look at you like during that period. The they have a period of alertness. Because I always try to step back out of the way and look at that and think, I'm their mama. No. A few minutes after they'll be looking around. The umbilical cord is clamped and then cut. There are no nerve endings in the cord, so the baby doesn't feel anything. Intense labor contractions end with the birth of your baby, but after a short break, you'll feel milder contractions that will signal the delivery of the placenta. So I thought I was this happens minutes. about five to 20 minutes after birth and lasts only a few minutes. The shrinking of the uterus after birth causes the placenta to separate from the uterus. Once you push the placenta out, it will be examined by your healthcare provider although you'll probably be paying more attention to your newborn. After you deliver the placenta, your healthcare provider will massage the top of your abdomen to help your uterus start and to shrink. And it'll be quite firm, and her massage wheel, bleeding. so, you know. This massage can be very uncomfortable. Like so to try me. taking deep breaths to help you manage the discomfort. The first few hours after the placenta is delivered is the fourth and final stage of labor as you and your baby recover from labor and birth. During the fourth stage, the uterine muscle becomes firmer as it continues to contract. The uterus shrinks to about the size of a cantaloupe in the hours after birth. The uterus continues to contract and reaches its usual pear size about six weeks after delivery. You might feel mild contractions called after pains as the uterus returns to its regular size. These aren't nearly as strong as labor contractions and they'll lighten up in a few days or weeks. Breastfeeding also helps this process along. You will have some normal bleeding from your vagina, which the nurse will monitor along with your blood pressure and other vital signs. At the same time, your baby will also be observed periodically. In the third and fourth stages, your body makes hormones that help you bond and fall in love with your newborn. They also increase your urge to protect and nourish him or her. During this time, it's recommended that you and your baby remain together, skin to skin. The baby is usually very alert and wide-eyed at this time. You and your partner's loving attention helps your baby adapt to life outside the womb. In the hours and weeks after birth, think of mom and baby as one unit that stays together, just like it was during pregnancy. On top of helping breastfeeding, keeping mom and baby together with regular skin-to-skin -skin contact helps the whole family bond bonding with your baby and like her feeling you and you feeling the baby it's just well I don't know I just thought well this is mine she is mine so when I felt her and it was real to me so that's why I felt me hizo sentir así como como completo me hizo sentir este este esa parte que yo buscaba que era la la de sentir mi padre You've reached the end of this journey through the stages of labor, and hopefully now you feel better prepared for your own labor. Remember that from the first signs of pre-labor through breastfeeding your newborn, your body is specially designed to give birth to and nurture your baby. Trust your own body and follow your instincts as you experience your own birth miracle. Felt a bond right away with the baby. She she was kicking me and she's poking me and wiggling inside of me and then all of a sudden she's laying on my chest. It was, it was great. Looking back, I don't think I would have changed anything about my birth. I feel that I had a really good birth. It was an amazing experience for me. I think next time, uh, if and when we have another baby, um, I will be a lot better prepared and a lot less worried there's nothing like the feeling of love between the parents and their child. It, it's all-consuming. The 
best part about being a new mom is um, is having this little life in the world to support and love and just um, go over and just the, the love that you can Any questions, y'all? No. Yeah, I got a question. What's your question? Do women do women ever pass out like in from pain? I have not ever seen that, but I don't know. I have to do more investigation on that. I'm just curious. Julianne likes to pass out on me, so I was just wondering if that's a thing. Hey, I would definitely tell her doctor that. Stanford, I would. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything unusual like that? Your doctor, you know, anything. If you're claustrophobic or you know, anything, tell your doctor. I don't like tuna. I don't like pickles. I mean, tell them, you know, because people, we, we even get people that are allergic to peanut butter up here. It's just strange things. So, tell your doctor. Well, that concludes this.